Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be talking about when you should use the minimap in Age of Empires 2 and let's just hop right in and check it out. All right, so the minimap in Age of Empires 2 is actually a very important resource, but it's not exactly clear when and how you should make use of it. There are a lot of people that give you some standard suggestions, like you should be always checking your minimap every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds, kind of like when you're driving a car and you want to check your side mirrors every so often. This is a really good general rule, but I'm of the opinion that checking the minimap is more important in certain times in certain cases and it's not that important in other times and other cases. It's also important to know what you're looking for when looking at the minimap because there's a lot of information on it and if you don't really know what you're searching for you can easily get lost and not take any information from it and it ends up just being kind of useless. It's not only meant to spot enemy units or anything like that which is obviously one of its purposes but there's a lot more that can be done with it and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and hopefully answer all your questions that I've been getting uh, over the past couple months on this topic. So the idea is that in Dark Age, there's a couple times where the minimap will be useful. Since not much is going on, it's more about just going about your build order and starting your development. The minimap isn't the most useful in Dark Age. However, there's two things that I want you guys to keep in mind. The first one is right at the start of the game, you want to use your minimap to orient yourself and to know where you are on the map. This might sound dumb, but where you are on the map can determine where is the front of your base. You can't really tell all the time by just looking at your starting screen if you have no minimap. So having a minimap is is a really good way to see where's the front of your base so you can prioritize scouting there because we want to scout the front of our base to make sure our opponent can't come really fast with his scouts to our base and find our sheep before we gather them for example. A good rule of thumb to follow is that right after you make your first two houses and you get your sheep back to the town center you start hunting them just take a quick glance at the map see where you are see where the front of your base is and continue your scouting pattern from there with your sheep and scouts. The second thing you want to keep in mind for Dark Age is a little bit more when you're scouting your opponent or when you're looking for your opponents you want to use your minimap to actually identify the probable locations of your opponent. The opponent will never be way too close to you on a standard game of Arabia for example and so looking at the minimap to determine a couple spots where your opponent is likely to be is a great way to make sure you don't just run into a corner and end up just wasting your scouting time scouting the edge of the map that doesn't really help you in the early game. Just a quick bonus tip when it comes to scouting here is that if you see a three tile gold or a three tile stone on Arabia chances are your opponent is on a completely other part of the map because you will never spawn too close to an extra resource like gold or stone. It's also the case for a group of camels. If you see a group of camels, they're not going to be close to it because that's just how the standard Arabia is designed at the moment. Using these tips is really important because it helps you get a smooth dark edge every time and it just makes your setup more efficient to find your opponents and it sets you off for a good start going into feudal age. All right, now when we're talking feudal age, this is when it becomes very interesting and very important to keep an eye on the minimap. Obviously, there's possibilities for a drush in dark age, so keeping a close eye around the drush timings, like seven minutes or seven minute 30 for a pre-mill drush and nine minutes for a post-mill drush is a good habit, just to make sure you're scouting those militias and you're able to see them as they approach your base. However, feudal age, there's almost definitely gonna be some sort of action on the map, and this is where you need to be sharp with your minimap. So my best advice for feudal age is to make sure you're looking at the minimap whenever you're anticipating an attack from the enemy and this is especially true if you're not fully walled because if you're you're open you don't have any buffer any timing window to where you see the opponent and you have like a couple seconds to react the wall can help you out here it's very important to react very fast because he's just gonna run into your eco and a late reaction can mean that you lose one or two villagers maybe even three and in such an early game that can be absolutely detrimental that's a big loss so the idea is to react or to know when to react and you do this by actually looking at the minimap to see where and where when your opponent will attack you. It's very common in Feudal Age for me to have my eyes glued to the minimap, like literally looking at it once every five or even three seconds when I know that an attack is definitely coming and I have my army elsewhere, for example. A little bonus tip here when it comes to anticipate attack timings is to understand when your opponent can attack you based on the strategy he's going for. Let me give you a couple of examples for Feudal Age. If he's opening with a stable, that means that one or two minutes after the stable's up, he's gonna show up at my base with three or four scouts and maybe if he wants to, one or two spearmen. It's a very standard situation that happens almost every time your opponent will open a stable they want to make use of it and make some scouts and so every time my opponent makes a stable about a minute later i'm always thinking where can my scouts where can his scouts rather attack me and if i don't have my army home if i'm trying to attack him i have to keep my eye on the minimap one minute afterwards to make sure if a 
is he even attacking me? And B, where is he gonna attack me from? And you might think it's not a big deal because you can just react when you see him. But oftentimes, if you see him and he's on your villagers, it's way too late by then. So being able to react as soon as you see him appear on your map gives you time to send the spirit to that location or even just run the bills back to the town center and save yourself some damage. So understanding opponent timings and keeping a sharp eye on the minimap when those timings are coming in are an amazing way to make use of the minimap in Feudal Age and will save you a ton of damage, I promise it. All right, now we're moving on to Castleage, and this is where things start to get a little bit more complicated, but that's where it gets interesting for me. The more complicated it gets, the more interesting it is for me, and that's truly what I love about Age of Empires 2. I just want to make a quick note at this point in Castleage that some of the other tips that I mentioned in Feudal Age and Dark Age might still apply for Castleage. Don't just forget about them once you reach a new age. You might still have to anticipate attacks and realize when your opponent can attack you based on his timings and strategy. However, in Castleage, there's another couple things that become very important that we need to take note of now. The first thing is to check the minimap to see a opponent gold and stone locations. Although I said opponent, this really also matters for you and I'll tell you why in a second. But opponent gold and stone locations in early castle age will decide how heavy you can commit to army and how much damage can truly be done. Let me give you an example. If your opponent has three forward golds in a very extreme situation, his main gold is forward and the other two golds are very exposed, going for all in castle makes a lot of sense because if you can deny your opponent gold and force fights where he's trading the gold he has and will slowly run out if he's not able to match your army, this is a great way to win games and close them out early because without gold, it's very hard to field powerful siege units, powerful units such as the knights and crossbow, and you rely on trash units, which do have a purpose in the game, but when you only have access to them, it's often a very big disadvantage. So being able to assess how much damage can be done based on your opponent's gold and stone locations is a very good way to plan out your castle age and determine how much you want to commit to it. The same idea of checking your map for gold and stone locations also applies to yourself. If you've got forward gold, you probably have to play aggressive to make sure you're able to secure it because getting forced off gold sucks, and the same is also true for stone. So just in early castleage, take a look at the map, make it a habit, and see where the extra golds and stones are. And it's a really good way to kind of set yourself up for a good mid game in most of the time. Also, when attacking, Pressuring woodlines can also be an effective strategy. However, I like to have the general rule of gold and stone being more important simply because there's less of them. For example, on a standard game of Arabia, each person has three golds and two stones, which that's not a lot, that's just five locations. So if he has a couple of them forward, you're able to deny. All of a sudden he's hard pressed and generally the main gold will run out sometime in Castle Age if he's making a lot of gold units. And so it can get very messy very fast. Whereas woodlines, there's a lot of them on the map. So denying one or two woodlines, while it's nice, might not actually starve your opponent out of any resource. All right, now going into late castle age this is where things t tend to get a little bit crazy because there's going to be more units on the field there's going to be more waiting happening and there's going to be a lot of weird kind of moments in the game where you're not going to be able to expect them all however my general rule for late castle age and onwards is to keep an eye on the minimap just to see where units are going at this point in time it's very common for there to be stray units on the field a lot of raiding going on and it's not going to be just battles in one area so keeping a close eye on the minimap can be a good way to spot your opponent's raids before they happen i also suggest getting outposts on the map just to help you get more vision and make your minimap even more impactful because you get to see those raids from further away. But of course, it's outposts combined with minimap because if you make outposts and you don't look at your minimap, then those outposts are as good as nothing. It's also very important to check the minimap to see where his likely expansions will be because in late castle age is where resources in your main base tend to start running out and you want to look for other resources on the map, whether it's extra woodlines or those extra golds and stones. So just checking the minimap to see when he's expanding and where his likely expansions are is a really good way to get ahead of the curve and kind of cut him off while he's not expecting you. A lot of people take for granted how easy it is for them to expand, but when they face a good player that's going to be keeping an eye on that, then you can catch them very, very off guard and do a lot of damage. All right, moving on into Imperial Age, and this is where, in my opinion, the, the minimap is the most important because here there's a ton of population, both players striving to get to 200 population as fast as possible. That's a lot of units on the field, and I don't know what kind of resolution you guys are using, but 200 units cannot fit on my screen, and so therefore I have to rely heavily on the minimap just to understand where my opponent's population is and also where my population should go. Let me give you a good example for late game. If you see no raids anywhere on the minimap, your opponent has very little expansion, no side production buildings, he's not going for any outposts on the side, he's not appearing anywhere with any raids, then chances are he's preparing one big push and he wants to attack in or fight in one area. This means that he's preparing some sort of siege, death ball composition, and he wants to win one fight and likely end the game. On the other hand, if you see a ton of outposts and red dots on the sides of the map and coming into your side of the map, this means that your opponent wants to go for some raids and he wants to kind of split up the map and try to spread you thin to get some advantage that way. And these two playstyles are completely 
completely different. It's very hard for him to be preparing a death ball push, like a one big push, and also be investing population on raids, simply because you only have 200 population. You can't have the best of both worlds. And so keeping a close eye on the minimap and just the game in general is a great way to understand your opponent's general game plan. And it really does matter because if your opponent is going for the one death ball push, you need to know in advance what he's going for to be able to prepare a defense. But if he's going to go for the raids, you need to probably set up your map differently where you have town centers and castles protecting your exposed villagers. It's a completely different play style and just understanding what your opponent is going for from the minimap is a great way to start Imperial Age off with a good kind of general mindset. A second use for minimap in Imperial Age is to check for wall positioning. Now this can either be for you or for your opponents. And if it's for you, you want to check to see if there's any big wood lines, the side of the map, any natural terrain that can help you wall. And you want to connect those wood lines or the edge of the map with some of your own stone walls in the mid game to secure the map, especially the sides of the map to prevent raids or prevent your opponent from expanding. And this keeps your side of the map very safe. And so checking the mini map at some point in Imperial Age is a great way to understand exactly where you need to be and what you need to wall to secure your map. It's really important to do this. And it also, like I said, goes for your opponents. If your opponent also has this option, you need to make sure you're constantly being around that area with some army or with some vision to make sure that if your opponent has a nice place where they can wall, you don't let them get those walls up. Because if your opponent just fully walls his base, it's really hard to break the walls and enter afterwards because your opponent will have that few seconds or even a minute where you're breaking his walls to react. So uh, you want to prevent those walls from going up ideally and checking the minimap early on is a great way once again to just get ahead of the curve and stop your opponent from doing whatever they want. One last bonus tip for the minimap in Imperial Age is to toggle military mode in super late game to find where all your spare units are. Sometimes units get lost patrolling, sometimes the spearmen that you have patrolling in Feudal Age kind of get lost and they're just eating up population space in Imperial Age doing nothing and near your berries that are long gone. And so just using the military mode in the minimap to find where all your units are is a great way to just get them all going forward or get them all doing something. And if you find any useless units, you can easily just send them into the battlefield or delete them to make space for better units and kind of keep yourself very pop effective because that's a very important concept in Imperial Age. You don't want to have any population doing nothing because that's just wasted potential pretty much. All right, that's pretty much all the tips I have when it comes to minimap and what you can do with it. But the last thing I want to end this video with is remember to actively scout the map. Guys, scouting the map is not a thing you do in Dark Age and then you just forget about it. You always have to have units moving around the map, outposts coming up in the mid and late game, some activity all around the map for yourself to actually be able to see what your opponent is up to and update the minimap. If you don't actively scout, all the things you just heard in this video is completely useless because your minimap will simply not update if you're just sticking in your base and never moving out. It's going to just stay for what you saw the last time you're out on the map. And if that was in Dark Age, well, you're going to see your opponents with a few palisade walls, maybe in a barracks and nothing else. So make sure you're actively scouting the map to update the mini map and to then make use of it. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay safe and I'll see you guys next time. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it and peace.